What's up StarCraft fans, this video is brought to you by Karis Band who is supporting me the post canon tier. We requested this month that I do pro tips for playing as Alarak. This video will be meant for beginners for this commander, as well as those who are returning after a long absence. So let's get to it. 10 pro tips for playing as Alarak. Number 1. Use the Shadow of Death prestige whenever available and rush to Death Fleet. Shadow of Death is the final prestige of Alarak. It allows him to summon the mothership at any point on, on the map for 400 minerals and 400 gas. The downside is that the destroyers that come with it have to be bought separately. Of course, it being the last prestige, you kind of have to work through the first prestiges to get to it, but it's actually worth it. Prior to that, any prestige will work depending on how you want to play. The mothership is a heroic unit. It costs 400 minerals and 400 gas for this prestige, and as you can see, only anti-air can shoot back at it. It has 1000 health and 1000 shields, meaning it's very tanky and can absorb a lot of punishment. And the most amazing thing of all, it does splash damage. You can see it fires thermal lines forward, it damages all the enemy units in the way, and it will actually take out a lot of bases and enemy waves without having any other unit with it, which means it's a great anchor for the early game. So a lot of People who have played Alarak before will note that he's kind of brittle in the early game, aside from having the overcharge, which is great, but without that, you kind of you kind of have to rely on your hero and uh, a lot of uh, playing hard uh, in the early game. But with this mothership, you can kind of just attack a little bit, it'll go in its own, it'll do really well, you don't really have to pay attention to it unless it takes, you know, unless you set it into a big base early on. But yeah, early game that usually doesn't happen, you can just stand here while you do your thing. What I like to do, especially on maps where the attack waves hit early, such as Rifts to Core Hall on Brutal Difficulty, I save up 75 of my first mills. I don't go for a, fir uh, for a first probe right away. Instead, I save up all my mills to buy two early gases, and I saturate those gases as early as I can. And then as soon as I have enough money, I just use it on a spot where I know that enemies will be and then I just send it forward to kind of just uh, yeah, eliminate all these clowns who think they have a chance against this actual capital ship. Number 2. Overcharge your pylon to take your expansion and make sure to provide vision for the overcharge. Overcharge is a powerful top bar that comes online every 90 seconds and you can select it from the left side of the top bar and use it on any building including these pylons which only cost 100 minerals. It's a great way to expand. As you can see, it shoots the nearest thing really fast and it does a lot of damage and using a single overcharge you can actually destroy all three rocks. The range of overcharge is actually greater than the vision of the pylons so you'll want to have something that provides vision in front such as this mothership which is convenient. So you can see that the ray yeah, you can see it shoots really far and if we're, if we're only the pylon here, it would no longer be shooting right now. It cannot see these buildings out here and these infested out here. If it weren't for this mothership, this probe, and my allies Zoria Legion. So very useful in the early game. Especially in the early game. Number 3. Wrathwalkers and Destroyers are the simplest army composition to use. Wrathwalkers are tall, mobile siege engines that can shoot from afar, they can see and walk up and down the cliffs as you can see right here. And they have 18 range which is incredible. And they deal so much damage per shot, they don't deal splash damage, that's the job of the mothership in Alarak. But you can see these pylons go down really fast, you can see that yeah these zalots they don't stand a chance. They got like 2 shot by these wrathwalkers, you can see yeah that's so much damage. And that's just a singular shot. So these wrathwalkers are amazing against things like hybrids, like main objectives such as this train, these void rays, these yeah, these mechanical units, they just shoot them down so fast. But you have to remember, to get the upgrade from the robotics bay, the robotics bay has two upgrades for the Wrathwalker. The first one, the one the third one from the left allows it to shoot up and they shoot down, so they can be anti-air on their own, and the right one allows them to shoot faster. Wrathwalkers are easily massable. And they can actually shoot while moving, which makes them great for just kiting big things like hybrids and just walking up to base and destroying them. Also, their range allows them to stay behind things like supplicants, which will tank for them while they kill 
this entire base very quickly, the more you have of them. Number 4. Always use Structure Over Charge Shield and Attack Speed Mastery. On Alarak's third power set, the final one, you have two choices, the good one and the one that you should never use. Corona Boost Efficiency allows you to produce workers faster, which is okay, it is a buff, but it, it, it's actually nothing compared to the power of Structure Over Charge. This thing will allow you to expand fast as you've already seen, it allows you to defend your base with a single click, and it often wins also, by the way. And it even gives your structure, or your war prism, shields which allow you to survive for even longer. So there's really no reason to take Corona Boost Efficiency if you're playing Alarach. Number 5. Always use Empower Me Duration Mastery. On Alarach's second power set and mastery points, you can either lengthen the Empower Me Duration which will allow Alarach to have Empower Me on for longer, or have a lower Death Fleet cooldown. So this will actually uh, allow you to summon the Mothership uh, more frequently, but it will not affect the initial cooldown time. What that means is, if you're using the first two prestigious, you will have a faster mothership, or not rather, more frequent motherships, but they don't last long. And for the third prestige, yes, you can call it down more frequently, but you really shouldn't be losing your mothership. So ideally, you should never have to rely on death fleet cooldown if you're on the third prestige. For the first prestige, however, the longer Alarak is empowered, the more damage you can deal with destruction wave and the deadly charge. So yeah, it's always better to pick the empower me duration. Number 6, get lots of supplicants. Supplicants are the fodder to Alarak's army. They are 200 health, they are produced in pairs, and they only have one purpose, to tank. So what they do is, if you're playing as Ascendants, they feed the Ascendants to give them more energy, and if you're playing Wrathwalkers, they stay in front of Wrathwalkers so that the Wrathwalkers don't have to take damage. So yeah, these things, yeah, they're very tanky, they take a lot of damage, and they prevent your actual damage dealers from sustaining or from receiving a lot of damage. So by making more and more of these supplicants, you just kind of ensure that you love you had a, that you have a lot of things to stay in front of the enemy. Another bonus is that Alarak has a buff which allows him to stay alive by sacrificing one of his units. If you have no supplicants and Alarak's low and Alarak's health gets really low, he will sacrifice one of your more important units, and believe me, you, don't want to, you do not want to sacrifice Wrathwalkers, Ascendants, or your Mothership. You want to have these Supplicants sacrifice themselves when Alarak gets to low health. Number 7. When running Ascendants, reset Alarak's cooldowns by sacrificing Supplicants one at a time. Alarak's level 15 ability resets the cooldown of Alarak's abilities by 10 seconds and 5 seconds respectively which basically means they're ready for use as soon as you sacrifice a supplicant. How this works is, first you have Alarak in one control group, you have Ascendants in another control group, as you can see I have yeah one of each, and you want to have a lot of supplicants, like a lot of supplicants, as many as you can as many as you can manage. As you can see I'm keeping my money low here, and I'm spending them on supplicants. So what you want to do when you activate it is, actually yeah, go, go to Alarak, Use his abilities, both the destruction wave and the uh, uh, deadly charge. You can see it's reset right away. That's because once I use these abilities, I switch back to the supplicants. I press this button once, the sacrifice, and then that will reset. You can see it's available again. So I use them both. You see there, they went on cooldown, and then I go to supplicant or I go to and then sacrifice one of those uh, one of those supplicants. And you can see these. Abilities are once again off cooldown and you can use them once again. So yeah, just rinse and repeat and they'll do really well for you. Watch the cooldowns in this segment. So they get used and reset. Used and... Okay, don't get reset. Oh, there we go. Reset. Yeah, used and reset. It's just like that. Just keep switching between Alarak and Descendants and you'll have these abilities constantly reset because you keep sacrificing your soup because you can actually just spam these if you're good enough with using them. Number 8. Bring a War Prism on a separate control group for overcharge. A War Prism is a flying transport that can carry some units inside it, and aside from being able to shoot, it's basically a 1v1 War Prism. It's not much, it doesn't even shoot that well, 
it doesn't even defend itself that well. The difference is that you can actually siege this thing up where you think you will need to reinforce things. Yeah, it's under here, yeah. You can siege this up where you need to reinforce things, and once it's in there, you can actually overcharge it. This war prism works exactly like a pylon for overcharge. You can still warp things around it, except it's in the air. So not everything can actually shoot back. So that's actually amazing for keeping things, uh, for keeping that thing alive, and remaining overcharged. And the best part about it is you can still unsiege, and this will remain overcharged, but it will not shoot. It will only shoot if it's sieged. So if you want to reposition, you have to reposition quickly, move it to the new location, and then siege it up so you can res resume shooting while still overcharged. Of course, it will retain the shield from overcharge. Um. Uh, as long as it is still active, yeah. As long as overcharge is still active, it will remain overcharged, it will have the shields, it just won't shoot unless it is actually sieged. Number 9, Vanguards are meme units. In the Legacy of the Void campaign, Blizzard introduced the immortal variant called the Vanguard. It can shoot a volley of 8 shots, and it can hit a bunch of ground units, and it cannot shoot up. So. In the campaign version, it shoots 8 shots, and when they introduce the same unit in co-op, it can only shoot 4 shots. So the thing is, the 4 shots aren't really that impactful, that you wouldn't make them over actual good units like these Wrathwalkers. These Wrathwalkers are able to much better scale, and they shoot really far, and they shoot up and they shoot down. And actually, the damage they deal is significantly more than the Vanguard, so yeah, the only time you want to build vanguards is when you're trying to be funny. Or you're trying to make your life harder for you because the game is too easy. When you make proper units like Wrathwalkers, Destroyers, or Ascendants. Number 10, your economy can support 3 robotics facilities or 8 warp gates. When you've decided that your army will consist of Ascendants and Supplicants, your economy can actually support 8 gateways and you can keep producing off of these gateways and you'll have constant production. If your macro is on point you'll have much lower money than this, the things I was kind of focused on clearing the map. So uh, yeah, there are a lot of, there's a lot of idle time but with on point macro, 8 gateways is enough to support your ascendant and supplicant army. If you instead opt for robo units, you can support with your economy Three robotics facilities worth of production. You can see the gas is uh, sufficiently low that you can still pump out uh, the Wrathwalkers. And for the gateways, you just build as many as you need to pump out your uh, your supplicants. Just make as many make as many supplicants as you can. Uh, yeah, five, I made five gateways here, but four gateways also probably work. You can also get upgrades. But yeah, three robotics facilities is enough to support your two base economy. Or your economy is enough to support three robotic facilities worth of production of Wrathwalkers. This is once again for you guys who are uh, new to playing Alara or who are returning after a long hiatus from StarCraft 2 co op. Although I recognize that the very first thing I said is for you to grind to the third prestige of Alara, it's still fine if you use any of the earlier prestiges, the remaining tips will still work. It's just that the first one will give you so much more of an anchor in the early game. But yeah, as I, as I said, the rest of the tips will still work even if you don't have the first prestige. And anyway, um, hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for watching. If you have an idea what else you do, please leave that in the comment. I'll see you guys next time.